This is the studio. Welcome to the studio. This is it. Not a lot. It's a room, four walls. Well, I'll say about six, seven, eight walls. But, uh. Yeah, you had a six. Yeah, six. Six walls. So. And a ceiling and a floor. Yeah, so there's a bunch of sheetrock, wood, all kinds of stuff in this room. But this is the studio. It's exciting. Doing things. Making big leaps. Yeah, having fun. Living life. So, last time we left off in Matthew chapter two. That's right. We finished up two and moved on to three. So, so we're going to jump right into three this week mm -hmm. uh, and just keep on pushing forward. So let's get straight into it. All right. So chapter three opens up with John the Baptist. All right. Open with John the Baptist. He was a fun, forerunner for Jesus. That's right. He came to pave the way. Mm hmm So. From the prophet Isaiah. Yeah. But I'm going to go ahead and just read a little bit, and then we'll break down and talk about it. Is that sure. All right with you? Yeah, start. All right. In those days, John the Baptist came preaching in the desert of Judea and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is near. This is he who was spoken of through the prophet Isaiah, a voice of one calling in the desert, Prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. Which references back. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to continue on. John's clothes were made of camel's hair, and he had a leather belt around his waist. His food was locust and wild honey. People went out to him from Jerusalem and all Judea and the whole region of the Jordan, confessing their sins. They were baptized by him in the Jordan River. So. John the Baptist. We get a little bit of a visual. We get a little bit of a. Yeah. First impression. This dude looks nuts. Wow, man. Yeah. He's wearing camel skin or camel hair. Camel hair. Let's talk about that. What, how do you wear camel hair? Not, I don't understand. You got le like you think of leather. You got you got a leather jacket on. He had the whole thing. He like, had the hair leather, on. Leather and hair. Oh, the whole jacket. Yeah. And then leather based. Leather. Leather belt. Belt. I can't talk. Sorry. Leather belt around his waist. There it was. Combined. Based. It. Based, yeah, <laughs> a leather base. I'm gonna call it that for him. He had a base on, but um, uh, so John the Baptist, if you remember, you can reference back. Um, so you know, I used a study Bible and had some references in here. You know, around there, it's Malachi 3 1, talks about him paving the way for Jesus. Uh, keep in mind, 400 years ago, right? Right, 400 years of. Time that records the prophecy of John the Baptist coming, paving the way for Jesus. Right. So, uh, John's birth is recorded in Luke also, and he's and genealogy. Uh, not necessarily. Yeah, there's a genealogy, yes, uh, but it's not. No, no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, not the genealogy of Jesus, but it. Well, the genealogy of Jesus is also in Luke, but right, yes, John right. the Baptist is his birth, like talking about his mom and his Elizabeth and Zechariah. Yeah. That was talked about in Luke a little bit more. But uh, he was made to, he was called a prophet of the Most High. Mm -hmm. And he was brought to prepare the way. So you look back and those references, there's references like we said in Luke chapter 1, verse 76, John 1, 23. So early on in the, in the Gospels, it's recorded that he's come, right. that John the Baptist is here. Right, and he's going to be paving the way for somebody greater coming behind him. And a lot, some of the things that I've read, I don't know if it's, or just some of the things I've read that people were like, "Is this Elijah, yeah. or is this you know the, the prophecy and the prophets that talk about the path for Jesus coming?" Mm -hmm. It really dates back to at least four hundred years. Yeah, in this time, to four hundred years. Yeah, not from today. And you talk about Elijah. Elijah was a little bit. I mean. Probably a little bit longer than four hundred years. Oh, yeah. that day. That yeah. was that was well back there. Yeah. Second Kings is round about the time frame you see where you see Elijah and his yeah in his heyday there. But um Second Kings says he was a hairy man. A hairy man. It says he's a hairy man and he wore a leather belt around his waist. Yeah. So another uh translation of the Bible that I've read says he wore camel's hair. Yeah, and then another one says he was a hairy man. And then mm -hmm. another one says he, you know, X Y Z. So that's funny though. He was a hairy man. That's how they, when he come 
busting up in there. That's what <laughs> they the thought. He was a whole hairy man. Oh, hairy boy. But John came in the same way. Yeah. And they also had the same message. That's right. Voice cried from the looked wilderness. Alike. They looked alike, they looked sounded alike. alike. Yeah. They were pretty close to each other. But just a few hundred years apart. That's right. It's pretty wild. But talk about prophets. Prophets then, like Elijah then, was the same equivalent to like you think of somebody on the street corner with a sign that says the end is near. Oh man. And that's crazy because even we walk by people like that. Yeah. You know. Don't even and, pay them. And a we second. hold, you know, well, I I try. I'm not I'm not perfect, but I try to hold a respect for for people trying to spread the word and be, and follow God and do things. Yeah. But I mean, if you talk about if I'm in a rut, if I'm busy, whatever, it doesn't matter. I walk by somebody that's like, the end is near, the end is near, come to Jesus. I'm just like, all right, yeah, I, amen, brother, but I got a, I got life to And I agree with you, but, right. You know, but, you know, that's one of those things, you look at those people, and a lot of people will consider them like extremists. I mean, right. the end is near, but these guys are like, putting it in your face. Yeah, but what is extremist when it comes to the There's faith? not. Exactly. That's what I said. A lot of people look at yeah. it as an extremist. But it's pretty crazy. And that's such a good point. That's a good visual for today's time. You know, you think about somebody holding a sign. I'm sorry to come back to that. No. I'm just, that's something that I can see in my head is somebody holding a sign on a picket fence or whatever, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. and you think about these prophets that were there from God, like, with the words that were to be said mm -hmm. and they're just passed on and, and walked by and people thought they were crazy, yeah. especially with the camel hair shirt and yeah. leather oh, man. belt. Hairy hairy man. A hairy man walking <laughs> around it's crazy. But that, that's a, that's a good, I'm glad you brought that up. That's good. Oh yeah. So John the Baptist, obviously by his name title, he was, Baptizer. baptizer. He was a ba he was John the Baptizer as right. they, as the officials called him. Yep. You know, we talked about his diet, locust and honey, wild honey. Yeah. I hey, you think about our diet. We're bl burgers we're and blessed tacos. enough to be able to we got Taco Tuesdays. Yeah. We got we got uh Mexican food on Fridays again. We got barbecue joints and this and that. I mean, hey, we can do we're blessed. We're not limited to just locusts and wild honey. But he know. took a Nazarite vow in that way. Yeah. So that's the reason why he took that vow. He never cut his hair. Yeah. And he lived out in the wilderness and he ate this specific diet based on his the vow that he took. Right. So uh, he was out baptizing and people, I'll read starting five, it says people went out to him from Jerusalem and all Judea and the whole region of the Jordan, confessing their sins, they were baptized by him in the Jordan River. So people were coming to him and confessing their sins <clears throat> and being baptized. So they were being baptized for the forgiveness of their sins. Right. 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 So then, but, the, but when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees mm -hmm. come into where he was baptized, and he said to them, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the coming wrath? Produce fruit in keeping with repentance. And do you not think you can say to yourself, we have Abraham as our father? Well, you got a father as Abraham. Yeah. I tell you that out of these stones, God can raise up children for Abraham. I'm going to take a pause on that. Take a pause on that. There's because, a lot to unpack in this little Because John, description. Whew. number one, you brood of vipers. Yeah, he, um, he addressed them as sorry, like egg-sucking egg snakes. Egg-sucking dogs. Egg-sucking dogs. What y'all doing? Y'all yeah. coming up in here, holiest of holy people, mm -hmm. you coming to me, and you don't even practice what you preach. Right. Come on now. Yeah. So that's where he gets into the next line, produce fruit in keeping with repentance. And that goes forward to, let me flip real quick, Acts 2620. Ooh, I thought I had a bookmark in there. I did not. Negative. Acts twenty six twenty. That was first to those in Damascus, and then then to those in Jerusalem, and in all Judea, and then to the Gentiles. I preached that they should repent and turn to God and demonstrate their repentance by their deeds. By their deeds. By their deeds. So, yeah. Pharisees were and Sadducees were living in a way that 
you know, was not demonstrating what they were doing in serving God. Right. They were serving and pleasing themselves and obeying the rules and the, and the laws. It's pretty hard. But, like, yeah. I'm sorry. I was, I'm listening to everything you're saying. I'm just, I'm, I'm unpacking a lot from these, you know. Yeah. And uh, produce fruit in keeping with repentance. Mm-hmm. That is such a, just a statement. That Show me the money, baby. Mm. Show bang, bang, bang. me the money. Show me the the fruit in what you're doing. Mm-hmm. And it's not about the good deeds. The good deeds aren't going to get you there. Right. But with a change of heart and a cha- an actual change with repentance, you know, you got repentance and you got remorse. Mm-hmm. There's a big difference Yeah, to me. But he was, you know, everyone's coming to repent and to turn from their yeah. sin. And they're trying to change their life here. And the Pharisees are probably just coming down there like, what's going on down here? Yeah. What's happening? Yeah. But Produce John calls them out. They come down there, calls them straight out. Yeah. Hey, what y'all doing up there? What, who's that walking up here? Like old Duncan, folks. What the heck <laughs> sucking dogs doing over here now? So 10 says, The axe is already at the root of the trees, and every tree that does not produce good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. Mm, and that's good, and that takes me back to the the uh, eight, produce fruit in keeping with repentance. Hey, you got you to gotta make the good fruit, and if not, that tree is fixed to be cut down. The axe is there waiting on it. Yeah. John's saying that their works are sour. Sour fruit. They taste sour. Hey, yeah, you pick that fruit. <laughs> look here. I'm going to look. I get it. That's sour. Yep. They have nothing to show for it. No, nothing to show for serving God except for their their status and their, yeah, and their and hierarchy their, of yeah. who's the better follower of Christ. All their actions are self-serving and... Without, they didn't have any weight. They didn't carry any weight at all. Their right. actions it were just, just it was for them. Skin to eat, yeah. sur- surface it, it level like good. his table. They were, it looked they good. Were... Hey, man. They went to church so that they'd never seen them going to church. Yeah. You know, and that's, that, like you said, a surface level, nothing in the heart, nothing in the soul. Mm. So, John says, I baptize you with water for repentance. But after me comes one who is more powerful than I, whose sandals I am not worth I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor, gathering his wheat into the barn and burning up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Mm. And that's good. Let's talk about this winnowing fork. Yeah. You know, I didn't know what this was until I really started digging into this and mm-hmm. researching. And looking up, what does a winnowing fork mean? What is it? You know, I know what a fork is. I know what a pitchfork is. I know what this stuff is. And the only reason I know the context I'm speaking of is because I Googled it. Yeah. Right. You got to dig in a little bit. Mm -hmm. So that the winnowing fork was used for separating. It was like a heavy over light type deal. So whenever they grabbed that, they reached into the, the, the threshing floor. Yeah. They would take and throw that up. So and there was a bunch of, bunch of uh, chaff. Chaff, mm-hmm. yeah. Which wheat, Bags. grain, and... and the, he- the wheat, the grain... The harvest of the, the labor is yeah. sitting here. Boom, you pick up the chaff. The chaff is lighter. And the grain and the, uh, the heavy and the grain, the good stuff will stay below while you're throwing out the light. Yeah. Um, or or the wind would blow the chaff away. Yeah. So when they would throw that up, the wind would blow that chaff away, and then the wheat would fall back down. That's right. Yeah, I, I, I explained that terribly. Sorry. No, you're good. But, that, I mean, that's that's pretty well it. They'd pick it up, the good stuff's left on the ground, because yeah. in the end, it was left on the ground. So cleaning the floor of what is the worth of Jesus, what is the worth of God, and then he was storing the good up in heaven, which is the barn. The barn, right. So, and the chaff goes to be burned, leaving the floor empty. And that goes like to Matthew, was it 13? I don't know where it's at on the page. I'll find it real quick. 13 and 30. Let both grow together until the harvest. So this is talking about the wheat, the, yeah, the weeds and the, the, and the, the, the good and the bad. Yeah, so, yeah the parable of the weeds. Yeah. So let it all grow together. I lost my page. Let, let it grow together until the harvest. At that time, I will tell the harvesters, first collect the weeds and tie them in bundles to be burned, and then gather the wheat and bring it to my barn. 
So whenever they would, whenever they would gather this, all the terror, all the the weeds would be flung out. Yeah. So it would all go wherever the wind's blowing it out of the way. They get all the wheat separated. So this that was saying, which we'll get into that in the parables later on in Matthew. They would gather all the bad, get it out of the way, so they could go back and pick the good, and then store right. it away in the barn. And we know what the barn is. Yeah. So, so that was uh, where were we? At? That would we're, be. We just in yeah, we're we're on three uh, toward the bottom. We're on twelve. Yeah, I got a different book than you. Yeah, a little, so, a little different page separation. So we got there. So I'm gonna just jump into thirteen. I'm gonna read mm-hmm. a few verses here because this is a bit. I like this a lot. Uh, then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to be baptized by John, but John tried to deter him, saying, "I need to be baptized by you." And do you come to me? Jesus replied, Let it be so now. It is proper for us to do this to fulfill all righteousness. Then John consented. As soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. At that moment, heaven was open, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Mm. Now, hey, that's the that's the baptism of Jesus, and I know that I read a lot there, but to 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 take the whole the whole scenario in, I feel like you need to get you know you need to hear the whole thing. Yeah, so Jesus was saying when he came to John, John's already talked about the one that's coming after him. That's going to be right. He can't. He's not worthy to carry his sandals. Or later on, I think John or Luke, I can't remember which one it is, said it uh, the. Straps of his sandals. I'm. I'm not I'm worthy enough to tie. Yeah, I'm yeah. unfit to tie. So he's talking about Jesus coming, and you know he's been preparing this way all this time, and now Jesus. Uh, I think John says, "Behold, the, the Lamb of God." Whenever yeah. Jesus walks up, he 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 calls him out. He said, "That's him. Yeah. That's the guy I've been talking about." That's him. Right. So he brings Prepare out. So this way. is this big entry of Jesus, and then. John in his head has to be thinking it's time. Like he's showing up, he, mm-hmm. my ministry is going on, and I know what I'm doing for Jesus. He's here now, so I have to figure out. Like he's going to pick, he's going to pick up and start preaching. So I've got to step back. You know, as John Baptist also says, "I must decrease so he can increase." Yeah. That's a Amen. big thing we talk yeah. about. So he, he he's trying to he's probably thinking in his mind, "I got to get out of the way right. because Jesus is going to start forgiving sins and people are going to be repenting." And they're going to go to Jesus and not me. But Jesus comes up to him and says, no, I sir, need you. it's time. I, need you. I want you to baptize me. Yeah, I'm next. Hey, Jesus in line. Like, hey, I'm next, John. Hey, and then you man, think, you come on, man. Come on. What, <laughs> what am I doing? But he said to him, let it be so now. It is proper for us to do this, to fulfill all righteousness. So, and, now, and now you've got a book, uh, The Study... Yeah, what's right the book you bought? Yeah. It is the complete guide to the Bible by Stephen M. Miller, and this has got a really good point in it that I'd like to point out. Yeah, it, where it kind of gives you two ways to view this. Right? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, got I got that right here. Mm-hmm. So it's either in that moment where you look at this talking about Jesus going public, the idea of that. Oh, sorry. But what, 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 I'm, what I'm getting at, and you can keep looking, whatever. Yeah. Uh, one of them points towards why did Jesus feel the need to be baptized if the Son of God doesn't need the sins forgiven, right? Mm-hmm. He doesn't need the, the ritual, but also uh, some folks, you know, some people say, this because this was his way of saying, I'm going to take on the sin of the world. And by doing this baptism, I'll take it on. And then when I'm baptized, it'll be, it'll be over with. Or yeah. the sin will be washed from the world. Which is kind of, I may be saying that a little wrong, because you have the cross. You have yeah. the death of sin on the cross. Yeah, and the burial so some, and then the resurrection. Right. But so, you have some, some speculation there. And then the other side, not to cut you off, no, you're the good. other side is... Maybe this is Jesus' way of showing us what we should do, you know, following his steps and be mm-hmm. baptized. And the and he's saying right here to do what is the righteousness. Uh, oh, here we go. Where am I at? 13. Let it be so now. It is proper for us to do the, to, 
for us to do this to fulfill all righteousness. Yep. Right. So maybe 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 some think that this is him saying we need to do this. And then maybe others say this is him taking on the sin. Yeah. You know, and that's I, I mean that's all it really says is it talks about the two trains of thought between it's either like you could you could view it as Jesus is in this moment taking on the penalty. Well not the penalty because the penalty is death. But right. you are also in baptism, you're dying you're dying in yourself. You're dying to sin yeah. and you're being raised in the newness of life. So he could either be doing that or you know, he could be the the verbiage that I was using is I'm taking Jesus would be saying to them, I'm taking on humanity's sin and I'm putting it to death. Right. Or he could say, Do as I'm doing. So that's yeah. just just two. And so you said that way quicker and better than I did. Oh, sorry, sorry. I, I was I was busy looking at my notes and I had it on there, but you know we still got there. We yeah. may we may have gone around it, but we're there. As you came up from the water, heaven was opened. You read that far, and the spirit descended like a dove, alighting on it. So, one thing that I out of this I get, which this is kind of a reference between the, the gospels is in that moment whenever the Holy Spirit came. So Jesus is here. The Son of God is here in the flesh. The yes. Spirit descends. So then there's two of the triune God. There's the Father, there's the Son, there's the Son and the Holy and the Spirit. Spirit. But then the Father speaks. And he says, This is, this is my, my son, son, whom I love. With him I'm well pleased. So there in that moment, Jesus comes out of the water. You got the you got the Son in the water, the dove Holy Spirit, the Spirit, and then the Father speaking. So the three, the triune God is there. The Godhead is there in this moment. And this, and is, a, this is what we see early on in Matthew. Yeah, this is chapter three. Yeah. And we've already seen miracle birth, miracle conception. We've seen <laughs> John the Baptist, which yeah. is also a miracle conception. Yeah. Not not quite as miraculous, but still but still, that's a lot to, there's a lot there, yeah. Yeah, she was late in age, be well beyond childbearing age. And the, I mean, the, him receiving the spirit in the womb, you know. Yeah. There's a lot. There's a lot to unpack in that. Mm -hmm. We'll get to it. So, but hey, I that, think that's a the triune God there, all in one, big heavy hitter. Mm -hmm. I say we take a quick break, and uh, we'll be right back. Yeah. Uh, these breaks fly by. It's like no time's passed for you guys, but about 20 years has passed for us. We've done a bunch of things. Went and drank well, a bottle yeah. of water. Went to work. Went to work. Slept a couple of hours. So we ended with trying God all in one place. Yeah. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And that's cool, man. That's You know, I'm not trying to circle back to what we were talking about, but you sit back and think about the, uh, the magnitude of that in one setting. God the Father, God the... Or, the Son, and then the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Right there. We'll see that again one day. Yeah. And it'll be just as wild as these people that were witnessing. Which, yeah. you know, Jesus hadn't called the disciples yet. Right. So it was still just Jesus yeah. walking. And then all these other people that were following John, which I think, like, I think <clears throat> in The Chosen, talks about Andrew being a disciple of John. I haven't really dug a whole lot yeah, of that. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. But that. Andrew followed John at a certain point. He knew who John was and knew yeah. who John talked about. So then, well, On the show, it depicts him as being friends. Yeah. Like, close. You so, know. He was heartbroken in the show about, you know, his friend, John, yeah. whenever. Being know, arrested. Whatever. Everything went on that way. So, Well, let's go from the water to the wilderness. Water to the wilderness. What are you talking about that? Mm-hmm. That's it. So and Jesus, as soon as he came out of the water, then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the desert to be tempted by the devil. After fasting for 40 days and 40 nights, mm. that dude was hungry. Yeah. Now, I added something to the Bible. I'm sorry there. He was hungry. That's what it says. It says he was hungry. <laughs> he ain't wrong. Okay, so I do a lot of fasting. Mm -hmm. I started fasting as a health thing, intermittent fasting and fasting. And now I fast very regularly, if not, if not once a week, at least three times a month. Yeah. And that's a spiritual fasting as far mm -hmm. as growing closer to God. I cannot fathom fasting for 40 days and 40 nights. No, I can't either. I'm oh, big my boy. God. I like to eat. Dude, 
You'd be miserable. I'd be miserable after about two days. 72 hours is what I normally, is my biggest. 24 to 48 hours is a normal fast for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, 40 days? And nights. And nights. Oh, my goodness gracious. In the wilderness, in the desert, alone. Yeah. With the devil. With the devil. Taunting you. Mm. Poking at you. So he says, the tempter came to him and said, if you are the son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Jesus answered, it is written, man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Mm -hmm. Now look at Jesus just slapping him back in the mouth. Like, I got something for you, man. I know I'm hungry. Mm. What do you, I know I'm hungry. I'm not trying to. What can you do? I, I can't live on bread alone. Right. I gotta live on the word. On the live word, in the, the word. The words that come from the mouth of God. Mm. Man. So that's. I, that's got, I get a lot of uh, personal connection with this part of scripture because I do fast and mm. it's, and I fast to grow closer to God, you know. Uh so just thinking, you know, I could be on day two of a three-day fast, and then you waving a cheeseburger like this. Yeah. Like, like those old cartoons with the pie smack, the pie yeah, like, thing. Coming over. Coming over your nose, pick you up off the ground, and you just, like, float to it. Exactly. You know, I can relate to that. And, you know, Jesus, Jesus, he didn't care, man. He he stuck to it. Yeah. So in that book, that, that guide that we looked at, it's just like a, it's got a couple of reference points, and it's got a really good one that I saw for this too. In the temptation, it shows three points, three different times he was tempted by the devil. That were the majors. He was tempted by physical. He was tempted by safety or rescue, or he was also tempted by salvation or worship by people right. from the devil, like the devil was going to force right. them to worship Jesus. Right. If he would just bow, bow the knee, yeah, in all and that, circumstances. And a good, I'm glad you brought that up because the the next one is the devil took him to the holy city and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the son of God, he said, throw yourself down, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you, and they will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Mm -hmm. So that's what you what you're saying. He's looking for that was safety. the protection, the safety, the yeah. or protection. It said, "Jesus, you're the Son of God. Nothing's going to happen to you. It's yeah, just temptation. Yeah. Like you're, you're if fine. You're, if you're the Son of God, yeah. If you're the Son of God, jump off his temple, mm -hmm. jump. Hi, man. Get off here. And no call, one he could do. Call it. your angels. Yeah. Right. No one he used to be one of them. Exactly. Call my brothers. They'll come <laughs> get you. They'll come get you. That's fine. And Jesus answered him. It is also written. Pause. This is one of my favorites. Do not put the Lord your God to the test. Mm. Don't do it. Don't that's test a, him. Hey, that's good. Because there's a lot of times in life, and I'm I'm fixing to ramble on like I do, where you say you're in a bad spot, or you're this, or you're that, and you're just asking God, God, just blah, 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 blah. Just, just, I would say I don't have the words for it, but what I'm trying to say is, don't put him to the test, but humble yourself to do God's will for you. Yeah. Don't try to make your path through God. Yeah. Do the path God sets for you. Or like if you say, God, if you'll just do this for me. I'll just do yeah. I'll do this. If you'll do this, I'll do this. Yeah. So you're going to put the, the almighty creator on the stand and be like, God, if you just take care of this, help me pay this bill. Yeah. I'll do. I'll do so much for you. Mm. But we everybody does it. It's yeah. hard to get around. But I mean, don't put him to the test. So that's two, and I know like all three of these temptations. Not to cut you up, mm. all three of these temptations. I just I relate to these a lot. Like we talked about, I really like the Beatitudes of Matthew, and we're gonna hit that hard, and we're gonna hit the Sermon on the Mount. But I like this is why I like Matthew. I really soak into these these words. Like, what I read, I relate to. Yeah. In a way that Matthew writes it down. And he writes it for the Jews. Mm -hmm. You know? He's not writing this to, to a Gentile or to, to me. He's writing it. But I just really relate to the words that I get out of this book. Yeah. 
Matthew's fantastic, and I, you know, we've covered a lot of ground on there, and you know, everything about it's been good, and everything, you know, we've seen Jesus come forth, and then the baptism. The, now we're at the temptation, right? So, you, we, you know, we kind of we talk about these, and and you see that we we see that Jesus was a man. But he was God, so hundred percent both both sides of it. He was a hundred percent God, hundred percent man. Right. And now you see him after coming out of the water, straight to the wilderness, is tempted the same way that we would be by sustenance, safety, and salvation. We're all tempted. The devil can offer you things in any different way, but you're offered the three S's. That's my three point sermon there. But you're offered three different things. Any anything, plug fill in the blank, whatever it is. The devil's offering you this. Just don't follow Jesus, and it's so easy to stay in time because you could you could plug I said plug anything in there in place of God, and it's that easy to, exactly. to follow the world and not follow yeah, Jesus. It's easy to idolize. Yeah, that's the that's what comes to my mind when you say that. It's easy to idolize anything. Mm-hmm. And what should we not do? It's one of the ten. Yeah. You shouldn't have any gods. I think it's the first one. You shouldn't have any gods before me. I am God. Right. Hmm. And so just to just to continue on what you're saying, again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. You think about everything you can have in the world. You know, you talk about Nebuchadnezzar, like I think, but Nebuchadnezzar comes to my mind. He's got all he wants. Mm-hmm. He's got the whatever. Comes in all their splendor. And this I will give you, he said, if you will bow down and worship me. And I like what Jesus says here. He says, away from me, Satan, for it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. You know what I just had a thought of? And this may be a side note. That's the same kind of verbiage he used with Peter. Get behind me, Satan. When yeah. he told Peter that, when he was saying, no, no Lord, not, not this. Yeah. You don't, yeah. Nothing but... Anything but this. This thing yeah. will happen to you. Yeah. But I don't know. This kind of popped in Get my head. Get behind me, Satan. Away from me, Satan. But to wrap up just this little bit of scripture, then the devil left him and angels came and attended him. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure they brought him some bread and some food. Manna from heaven, but it was best manna. Sweet. Probably some, you talk about five, two loaves and what was it? Five fish or five, vice versa? Yeah, five fish. Five, five fish. <laughs> That's it again. Five loaves and two fish. Okay, yeah, that's right. I remember seeing, there's a picture in my mind now. I remember a mosaic we looked at that was... Yeah, uh, with the two fish yeah, and the basket. a basket of bread. Couldn't figure it out. I'll hey, I think I'm going to make a tile mosaic. That'd be pretty cool. I think I'm going to do it. Do it in your shower? No shower? Oh, that'd be cool. Yeah. Do a cross on the back wall. Yeah. Mm. But the angels came and attended him, so... So he was days, well taken care of. Yeah, that. forty days, forty nights, tempted by the devil, battling uphill, uphill, snowing, going to school uphill both ways, like like our parents and our grandparents yeah. used to go. Yeah. It was, everything was uphill. So Jesus is here. He is. He's tempted. He's out in the wilderness, beat, and and the what, beauty of this, is, not to cut you off, the beauty of this is like you think of the temptations we have in life, and you think of the uh, the challenges we go through. There's not a temptation that will lead to sin that Jesus didn't go through. And overcome. And overcome. There's not one you can name. Right. Everything that we go through on a daily basis, Jesus has gone through and overcame and walked the perfect life. Yeah. And so this is three good examples, but there's a lot more. Mm-hmm. There's so many more that we could go through. That I don't have the words of how he did it. But John just, says at the end, if everything that Jesus did was recorded, there wouldn't be enough books for it. So exactly, yeah, that, good that's point. temptations. Uh, good one. Everything yeah. that Jesus went through, there's not there's enough no way that it could be recorded right. because there's so much stuff that that happened. Yeah, and it's uh, I, I don't know. I just I like. Everything leading up, look, like I like, we started in one and we got the genealogy, then we got the birth. And that's fantastic stuff. But you you get me into this three through about seven or eight. This is what gets me fired up right here. Mm-hmm. So that's the challenge right there. You, you serve God, 
devil may tempt you. The devil may try and combat you. But at the end of the day, you know that Jesus overcame with the power of fasting, prayer, and staying hungry and feeding on the word. That's right. So, but that's, I mean, that's a a, a point right there. Don't live on bread alone. That's a, that's a good place for us right there. That's verse 11. And when we come back, we're going to pick up in 12 of chapter 4, and we're going to run through the rest of 4. And that's Jesus' entrance. Yeah, that's getting him up to, to let's start talking to the public. Yeah. So he's beginning to preach then, and right. then going on, it causes his disciples. We'll get into that on the next episode. Yeah. But uh, if you guys enjoyed this video, like and Give subscribe. It a like. And as always, keep in fofo. And lock it in. Lock it in.